we got news out of Bill's camp. We got news out of Bill's camp. I know, right? What <laughs> what happened? We just what? had an episode like a half hour ago, and then all of a sudden, they're like, the gods just shined down upon us, and was like, Paul and Mario are going to have to do an episode real quick. They're going to have to. They haven't been in the car for about a week, so they got to get back in and, and get it done. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, thank you for joining us. Uh, obviously, our title sponsor for all of our live shows is uh, Mr. Rogers Holmes, Sean Rogers. He'll be in the description of the video once I actually upload it because we had to go live really quick to try to get mm-hmm. this news out to you that the Buffalo Bills and Sierra Neal have agreed to a three-year deal worth up to $10.9 million. Uh, the former first, fifth round pick of 2018, Sierra Neal has a, uh, appeared in over 1,000 special team snaps since joining the team, only missing one game in the four years that he's been with mm-hmm. the team. I think that speaks to the durability of the kid and his work ethic and the culture of the Buffalo Bills and what they were trying to portray uh, in rewarding their own. Uh, I mean, yeah. right out of the gate, I'm just going to say that, Paul. I think this is one of those s- scenarios. We had talked about Sierra Neal on many episodes uh, previously, like in recent history. So I just want to get your take on the whole uh, three-year deal up to, worth up to $10.9 million. Yeah, right. That's a big number. Like, that's a yeah. reasonably large number. It's kind of funny, right? Because when you look at that and then you think of where Buffalo has put their money before, are we shocked it's in the secondary, right? So yeah. the Sierra Neal signing tells me a couple things. One, they're protecting a little bit against the draft class. And two, uh, he's a do everything player for you, right? Like there's just no way that they value his special teams contributions this much, right? Yes. Like there has to be a larger plan at play here because that's a pretty decent amount of money, especially considering when uh, you look at what they had just paid um, uh, the, uh, oh geez, uh, Teron Johnson. We look at what they just paid Teron Johnson last season, right? Mm-hmm. That's a deal that really, when you pull back the curtain on it, right? He signed a four-year $24 million deal, right? And this is a three-year $10 million deal. Now, obviously, Teron Johnson has played far, far more snaps on defense than, than Sierra Neal, but yeah. they are just throwing money at that secondary, man. Paul, I have a question for you, and you yeah. usually like these types of things. Yeah. With Bobby Babbage, mm-hmm. where did he go again? He, Babbage. He went, he went from well, his father retired, but then yeah. did he? Did he? He's he now the linebackers coach. It's not officially Buffalo? been announced. It's not officially but, uh, been announced. Uh, you, you take a guy from the secondary and put him in your linebacking room, though, and then fixes that nickel later, linebacker role, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Matt Milano's six foot two and a quarter. Sierra Neal's six foot two fifteen. I mean, we're not mm-hmm. splitting hairs here. I mean, right. isn't this this is not the money for a backup safety or backup corner. This is no. the money for a backup linebacker in the NFL going right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a really fair point, right? So yeah. um when you start peeling back the layers on this, um, <laughs> you know, we're talking about uh, you know, Sierra Neal is a guy who's spent again, uh, he's played he's never played less than fifty seven percent of your special team snaps in the four years that he's been with Buffalo, right? Um, that's a large chunk of plays, but he's never played more than 18% of your defensive snaps. So again, he's been a break glass in case Teron Johnson gets injured sort of player. (laughs) And he's been effective in that role. Right. But I'm pretty confident when I say this, Mark, are you really comfortable with Sierra Neal in coverage on wide receivers? Or are you more comfortable with Sierra Neal in coverage on tight ends that's this is exactly why I brought, we, we've yeah. talked about him being a horse in there as far as a corner goes yeah. i mean he's a big he's a big dude yeah. um not tall obviously but he's just he's just, you know a big thick guy mm-hmm. uh i trust him on tight ends all day i trust him on running backs coming out of the backfield mm-hmm. he'll have an advantage on those like i said i'm not comparing him to matt milano please don't misguide that i was right. just saying you know by height and weight I mean, this get this could be a move where Paul, you've talked about it many times. Sure up that linebacker room. You have to try to do something with that. Mm-hmm. In the past, happy NFL, the way it is right now, a lot of those guys, you're seeing safeties come in from college that end up going into the linebacker position. They put on yeah. a few pounds. They still maintain their speed, so they're able to cover the running backs and the tight ends. Right. So now you have a guy already in the building that you've had for four years. True, he hasn't played a lot of defensive snaps, but missed one game in four seasons. Yeah, has done everything you've asked. Was yeah. drafted in the same draft as um, as Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. Now to look at that draft, I just it's it's interesting to see. You look at that 2018 draft for the Buffalo Bills. If we just take a 
You have Allen, Edmonds, Phillips, Teron Johnson. Your fifth pick was your fifth round pick was Sierra Neal now. Mm -hmm. So now you, you, you would think with the extension of Edmonds, possibly Harrison mm -hmm. Phillips resigning to retain five players from one draft is from yeah, four years impressive. ago. That's pretty impressive. And, and, and I'll throw a little nugget your way, Paul. Their other fifth round pick was Wyatt Teller, who they, the pick that they got from him from Cleveland was what they sent to Minnesota for Stefan mm -hmm. Diggs. Right. Well, and you know, so, I think, I think there's a point to be made there, Mark. That was Bean's first official draft as general manager. That was right? yes. So, uh, you know, it, he came, he got to double dip a little bit, right. Comes over from Carolina already pretty confident in what they were, what their scout team, uh, what their scouting department was in on. Then you leverage what you brought with you and your new scout team. You could be pretty dangerous, right. With, with multiple teams information, which leads back to another episode from a couple of weeks ago when we were in the car talking about what the bills are going to do in the draft. But listen, we've seen Buffalo do this before. And I, I, I agree with you that it's sneaky from a corner's perspective, right? Because everybody's probably looking at this as, you know, getting Sierra Neal in coverage. But I, I'm I'm really inclined to agree with you. We've seen Buffalo do this where they they will sign a free agent uh, right before the draft or they will extend a player already in-house, but still protect that player in the draft, right? They're protecting that position in the draft. Yeah. And yeah. I think Buffalo is very in on linebacker. Uh, in this upcoming draft, you have to be. I think you have to be. Oh, I think um, they will. I mean, if you think, if you yeah. look at it, he's 27 currently. This right. new deal will take him to at least 30. Yep. Going right. You know what I mean? He he gets his money. Right. Um, but but he, just to see all of that stuff unfold, I mean, that's it. That's immediately where I went though. I meant, mm -hmm. listen, okay, you know, he Bean does love his insurance policies in that draft. Yep. I mean, we're getting in the comment yep. section. If you could put players on the field where quarterbacks and the offenses can't diagnose where he's actually going. Mm -hmm. You know, Sierra Neal is kind of that, that hybrid guy. You could put him right. at safety. You could put him yeah. at slot corner, albeit we don't feel hundred percent comfortable with him at that slot corner role, even though he has played it. Right. He can man up on tight ends. He can man up on backs. He can mm -hmm. do a bunch of different things for you. He can come off the edge. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a just physical we, guy. He's no, a yeah, physical yeah. guy. Yeah. Just because we haven't seen it much because the guys around him, you haven't you haven't really had a chance to do that, but his maturation in this defense, I think, is it's a great signing for the Buffalo Bills. And we could, who knows, at the end of this season, we could say, hey, they got him for cheap. Well, that's three what years, I mean, ten point right? nine. Like, I know it. I know the number looks big, right? But yeah. it's three million, three, three, not even three and a half million dollars a year, man. Like that's this is not that. This is a good signing because it. It, it's not going to tie you down, right? This is money that you could walk away from really at any time. We don't know yeah. what the signing bonus money is yet. Yeah. So we don't know if they're really locked into Sierra Neal this year, but we've seen Buffalo sign players, especially special teamers to contract extensions and then cut them and then bring them back the following week. Hashtag Reed Ferguson, right? They signed Reed to the biggest contract of a long snapper in NFL history. He didn't even make it five months on that deal because then they cut him. <laughs> to, to hold Marquez Stevenson. I don't want to get into it, but they brought, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, Dennis Chapman had a great one. He says, is this Koi Wire 2.0? Uh, Tim Ellis, dang, that 2018 draft was crazy. And yeah. then Philip Gong said, did you guys see that Diggs says that he wants to recruit for us this off season? Uh, and Steve and Stephen Gorney talks about the big nickel, just got a big stack of nickels. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look at this as one, there's a story to be told here, right? And it's, yeah. if you come to Buffalo, if you get drafted by Buffalo, they're going to take care of you. They're going to retain their own. They're going to build that culture. Buffalo, again, has really, really, really done a good job of avoiding cutting players before their contract has expired, unless there's something going on, right? Like Quentin Spain, there was something going on. They, they've yeah. been able to avoid that. And they've really fostered the environment that you will earn your next contract here. And that doesn't last forever, but... Bean still thinks that, you know, that honeymoon is still here when you can have the luxury to sign a player like Sierra Neal, who admittedly you could probably look at a draft replacement for. But is this a sign, Mar? We talked about it earlier. Is this a sign that Buffalo's either going to push all their chips into the middle of the table to go up in the draft or they're going to pull their chips back in the draft and kind of wait this one out? I, I say they go for, for one big player. I think a lot of your information, as you said many times, Paul, all of your information is really public knowledge now, whoever is the highest bidder. So to try to, you know, go after a few guys, you have to shake up the draft yourself because your your draft boards for the first four rounds are out there in their public knowledge. I mean, 
we say that like it's automatic, but you know how teams roll. You know, yep. you got two different. I mean, you lost an offensive coordinator. You mm-hmm. lost a line coach. You lost guys who were in the front office working hand in hand with Bean. So you're going to have to try to do something different in this draft. And I understand that. Signing Sierra Neal. Now, does this put, let me ask you this, does this put pressure on free agents that would want to sign with Buffalo knowing that they want to retain their own? And it's like whoever gets to the table first will get a piece of the pie to go to Buffalo because they they do take care of their own. This is almost like, this is almost like a Green Bay type, Green Bay esque type thing. When when Rodgers was in his first few years, you know they had, they had made a point one time. You're like Green Bay doesn't like a lot of big free agents. Like Reggie right. White was like the only really big free agent they yeah. ever got. And yeah. then they would always have their homegrown talent. They would build yeah. through the draft. Yeah. And Buffalo seems to be taking a similar approach to that. I mean, you talk about five guys that could be signed from one draft from four years ago. I mean, that mm-hmm. is amazing. And then yeah, you look I- at the draft since. We could talk about it, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think you look at it and maybe there's a little bit of a changing of the guard there where Buffalo is trying to use contract extensions like this to lure players who maybe had a really down year last year and are looking to reestablish value, right? Because maybe they'll reestablish value and be able to stay in the same spot with a winning organization, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. maybe this is a maybe this is a little bit of a political play. The fact of the matter is, though, Sierra Neal has never done anything to make you not want him to be on your football team. But True. signing Sierra Neal makes me say, OK, Bills are probably going to look to walk away from Taiwan Jones, because why would you retain Sierra Neal yet still retain Taiwan Jones at this point? Right. So yeah. that speaks to the play at running back. Right. Taiwan Jones, no matter what was going on at running back, was just never going to help that group. Right. Mm -hmm. He was never going to help that group. Sierra Neal can still contribute for you and has on the defensive side of the football. So maybe that running back room is a little bit more in play than people are really talking about. You just you just want to do that. I mean, that's the next uh, episode hey, that's coming up too. Yeah, it's coming hey, oh, up on Friday. I didn't it's, I didn't look our Friday episode. We talk the Friday about episode. We talk about a little bit about the draft and where Paul wants the where Paul thinks the Bills will go, and I I give my opinion on where I think the Bills are going to go in the draft. Uh, but you got to you guys got to remember that is you know talking about this here, a lot of things happened with this signing. It's just not the Bills are are signing a player that they drafted four years ago in the fifth round to a ten million dollar deal for three years. You're retaining your that goes a long way with with players you know what i mean especially if you want to draft certain players and them their willingness to want to go to your team once you get drafted buffalo has developed a winning culture over the last few years as a team that's going to could make a run for a super bowl yeah. now you're starting to retain the players that you have mm-hmm. and that's that speaks volumes to the locker room in and of itself too Right. Because this guy has been a grinder on special teams mostly, but has probably been working his tail off this offseason to try to get on the field. And it probably speaks to two more things, Paul, that we said. Number one, you, there's no need to retain Taiwan Jones at this point. You could walk away from him, which brings a running back on the table for the Buffalo Bills right. and may take a linebacker off the table because right. of what they may want to do with him. Now, I have to ask you this. Does that make you feel – Is that does that give you any kind of comfort Knowing that if they put a running back on the table, they're taking a linebacker off. Because I know how concerned you were with that linebacking core. Yeah, I'm. I you know I think it's pretty easy to just throw the 13 second word around, you know, and say the Bills yeah. have to be concerned about their linebacker group. But you know, I I look at it this way, right? Buffalo hasn't necessarily failed in their linebacking group because when they put resources in that area, they 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 were successful, right? outside of Edmonds and outside of Milano, what resources have they really thrown at the linebacker room as far as draft resources? None. Not, none. 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 Right, exactly. So they've hit there. I know we always talk about Whaley being that linebacker factory, right? But that was a constant churning of resources. Buffalo really has, has avoided that. So, um, you know, I think new offensive coordinator running backs, the new shiny toy, but I think we should probably wait a little bit to talk about that till people see the car episode that we already cut, right? Because I... I I uh, I think on Friday that'll be a fun one. That's a fun debate. Now, a, a nice little um, trivia question for you guys, if you want to talk about the, the debates that we used to have. The last linebacker that the Buffalo Bills drafted was in 2019 in the fifth round. Paul, do you know who that was? 2019 in the fifth round? Yeah. 
Remember who that was? I didn't ask you so you could look it up. I was quizzing oh, you. No, I was asked. I was just thinking. Twenty nineteen in the fifth round, and it wasn't Razor Ramon Humber. Humber. It really was. Yeah, it was, yeah. Evan Anderson just loves Ramon. He loves Humber. Ramon. Humber. Loves Ramon Humber. Uh, it was Volshan yeah. Joseph. Oh yeah, well, that in was the twenty nineteen draft. That was a culture. That was a culture issue, right? They yeah, didn't but, think he was doing the work, so they let him go, and he didn't land anywhere. And Volshan oh, no. Joseph was a freak. A he was. freak. And he didn't he land. Was. I don't even think he landed on a team's practice squad after Buffalo cut him. But it speaks to your point. Over the last two drafts, they they have not yeah. delegated yeah. any resources to the linebacking room. Yeah. So maybe this was maybe this was their long term plan all along with with Neil to be like, uh, I mean, because if you know two, you know two goofballs can see that he has a little bit of struggle in the slot, <laughs> but does really well. I think somebody brought up in the in the chat. I can't remember what the name was, but they said. You know he was he did pretty good against Kelsey. He fared pretty well when the in the game that they won. Um, he was yeah, bodying them up, was, and they didn't uh, have Milano. I think that said that. I think uh, Vita Vega said that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was. He did fairly well. He does fairly well against those bigger guys, but right. against running backs coming out of the backfield, he has. I think in six playoff games, he has seven tackles and a sack for a guy that doesn't play all the time. That's what I on mean. Defense, yeah. it's huge. Yeah, that's so. It. I mean, if you wanted to go with a three linebacker set and you want to put him on the field. I'm not mad about it. I think you look at Siren. Siren Neal is always kind of, oh God, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to a player. And the, the reference is not going to sound like it makes a lot of sense to those who aren't like original hashtag OGs. But Siren Neal reminds me a lot of Leotis McKelvin where, <laughs> Eddie, I know that's a weird one, right? Where when he can keep the play in front of him, he is one hell of a football player. But when he can't keep the play in front of him, he gets a little lost, right? McKelvin was a great corner who simply had no earthly idea where the football was when his back was turned, right? No, had no earthly idea. And we always said Leotis McKelvin would be one of the most dangerous slot corners in the league if they ever put him there, right? And Buffalo never did, but Sierra Neal kind of fits that mold for me, right? Where he's a very talented guy, but oh my goodness, just keep the play in front of him, right? Just find out. <laughs> Put him in a position where the play's in front of him all the time. Did you did you say that was the Leotis McKelvin was the Alex Smith of the defenders because he went through like 17 coaches? He sure did. He yeah. Did. He, he survived like, every regime. Yeah, it change. didn't matter. Yeah, Leotis McKelvin was the holdover all the time. Like he was just he was the one player that made it through every coaching staff. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, speaking of players and free agents and draft picks and stuff like that, guys, we do have a website. It's up above my name right here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Right next Looking to uh, right next to right? silky smooth transitions. You like that? Uh, yeah. We've been talking about you know the draft picks of other teams, so we're, we've been focusing on divisions uh, each weekend. There's four weekends up until the uh, free agency period starts. So if you want to get uh, some inside knowledge on some other teams that may have free agents that they're going to lose, percentage of snaps, uh, what their salary cap situation is, what their rookie pool is going to cost. Uh, go ahead over to htagsports.com and check out all of the teams that are on there because there may be some names up there that's that kind of shock you. And I threw one of them at Paul and I threw one at, um, one at Paul in the car this week with uh, Terrell Edmonds, Tremaine's brother, who was a free agent for Pittsburgh. But I doubt, especially with the signing today. Yeah, I mean he yeah, would he would have been that guy. Yeah, he I think we might be guy. done. With, I mean, and maybe not, right? Like Levi Wallace yeah. is still a free agent. You know, um, like yeah. there's still some decisions to make there. But uh, I mean, are we you know, saying are we saying this isn't they didn't sign their CB2 at this point? I don't think Sierra Neal's your CB2. Yeah, I think I'm pretty comfortable sitting in, in that one. Yeah. I and it's not throwing hate on him either. It's no. I, I, I think they realize he's probably that hybrid that they could throw anywhere on the field mm -hmm. and have him make plays for you. I yeah. mean, that's that's a, yeah. where did he uh, go? bit of Vega actually brings up a good point, And he is right about this. Bill's PR on Twitter did call Sierra Neal a corner. Which again, you know, oh, yeah. you can label him whatever you want, right? Because he ha he's played roles everywhere for you. So label him whatever you want. Does this exacerbate the the Bean or the, or the McDermott probably Frazier connection as far as cornerbacks go? I mean, you signed Teron Johnson out of Weber State, and now you just signed Sear Neal out of Jacksonville State. Yeah, those two powerhouses. You yeah, got right. corners from there. <laughs> Mario, this coaching staff went to William and Mary. Come on. <laughs> Small school central, baby. Small school central. Let's do it up. <laughs> They're going to be scouring Mount Union and UW Whitewater and <laughs> St. John's and all those Division three schools. So um, Just as long as it's not Akron. 
Neil's a huge active. special teamer. Thank you guys for breaking the news on this. Paul, you weren't here the whole time, Paul Berg. You were not here the whole time. Stop it. <laughs> well, Mar, we should probably wrap up, shouldn't we? Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Should, Fred, yeah. Uh, Rick Rarick, Fred Jackson, Co College. That's right. Freddy. Well, Levy went to Co College, right? Who did? Didn't Levy go to Co College? I think that was the connection. I think Levy went to Co College. Well, I know Levy had a master's degree from Harvard in English literature. I know that. I don't know why I know that, but I know that. Yeah, we do got to wrap it up. So, ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, Sierra Neal signed a three-year deal worth up to, project. I mean, just first reported about $10.9 million. Uh, he was the fifth player taken in the 2018 draft behind Allen, Edmonds, Phillips, and Teron Johnson. Being able to retain five players from one draft that are productive players for you, he's obviously made his mark on special teams, playing over a 1,000 snaps, and has only been missed one game in his four years with the Buffalo Bills, speaking to his durability. We're just going to have to wait and see where the Buffalo Bills want to use him in 2022. So for Paul, I am Mario. This is Hashtag Sports. Thank you guys for joining us. We're out. All right. See you guys.